Hi everyone and welcome back to the Commodore Room. Hope everyone's having a great day. What you're looking at here is the Commodore 64 from the last video where we installed the HDMI um, converter so that we can have HDMI out on this guy. So I did finally get the uh, correct power connectors and I fixed all that up so it looks a little bit nicer here. The other thing that you'll notice in this, which is a little bit different than the last video, and I'll zoom in on it, is I installed Jiffy DOS. Uh, for those that have used the Commodore 64, the I.O. routines for the uh, Commodore and the 1541 disk drives were extraordinarily slow and painful, and it's not part of the experience that I necessarily care to relive. So I try to use Jiffy DOS whenever I can to speed things up. The one thing about Jiffy DOS is you'll need the ROM enhancement in the 64 and then also in the disk drive. This is the 1541 disk drive from our modification videos. I'll put links to those videos in the description below. As part of those modifications, I installed this button here to switch back and forth between Jiffy DOS and regular Commodore DOS. And I also, as you can see, hooked up the LED to change colors depending on which ROM was enabled. And then, uh, aside from the power supply that was also modified in this to make it lighter and cooler, you'll notice that it also resets itself anytime I push the button. Now, the thing that I like about this is I can look at it and very quickly tell, am I in regular DOS or am I in Jiffy DOS? As we talked about in those other videos, certain programs, the copy protection and fast loaders, would not work correctly if Jiffy DOS was installed. So you can switch back and forth in order to play the games that you want. So to me, that visual indicator is a really handy thing to have. So what I want to do to this Commodore 64 is really the same thing. So as is fairly standard on Jiffy DOS installations on a Commodore 64, there's a switch to go back and forth between stock, Commodore 64 ROM, and then the Jiffy DOS ROM. Like with the disk drive, I'm going to change the power LED to go from green to blue so that they match between the disk drive and the computer. And I can tell if they're both blue, then I know they're both in Jiffy DOS. Uh, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to use this switch. Um, I don't like that switch. I didn't like it in the last video. Uh, that hasn't changed. So what I want to do is I want to modify this Commodore 64 such that when I turn it on, it automatically goes into either Jiffy DOS or the stock ROM, whichever. And then maybe when I hold a key down, maybe J or N or, or something, when I hold a key down and power the unit on, then it will switch to, the, to that other ROM or that other personality. That way I don't have this obnoxious switch hanging out up here that looks kind of dorky. So I want to modify this so it's all internal. Obviously it's got the HDMI out, which is cool, but we're going to go ahead and modify this so that when I hold a key down, it'll go back and forth when I power it up. And I'm also going to put an LED in here that goes between green and blue, depending on which mode the 64 is in. So what you see here is the schematic I cooked up for this project. Over here is the input from the key on the keyboard that I'm going to use to determine whether or not to go to Jiffy DOS or standard ROM. And then the second input here where it says system reset, that is essentially going to go to the reset line on the motherboard so that I know when the system is being powered on or reset if there's a cartridge or something in use. Right here, this is a 7474 logic chip, or 74HC74 in this case. This is basically a one-bit memory that just remembers what the state of the key was when the machine was powered on. Um, I'm using a flip-flop is the type of uh, IC that I'm using here. And then I'm using an LS138. If you've watched some of my other videos, I use these to drive the multicolor LEDs because it's just really simple logic and so that's what this chip is here and then finally here is our multicolor LED so the blue and the green inputs go to two different outputs on the 138 and then finally we've got the Jiffy DOS ROM that you saw this is an actual Jiffy DOS ROM that I bought and I'm going to replace the switch that you saw with a wire that goes to the 138. So this is basically the circuit that we're going to build and that should give us the desired functionality. Since all good YouTube videos have a schematic in them, it's time to figure out where we're going to plug our circuit that we designed into the motherboard itself. So the best place to start would be right here. This is the keyboard connector that comes from the keyboard and into the motherboard. The Commodore 64 does 
a keyboard matrix scanning routine in the ROM that plugs into the CIA chip that basically allows it to decipher which keys are being pressed. And I kind of forgot about that until I looked at the schematic and then I remembered uh, what was going on here. So in order for us to use the Commodore key or the letter N or J or something on the keyboard on power up, I would have to run wires to the keyboard and then bring those down and add some additional circuitry in order to make that work. Um, kind of lazy, don't really want to do that. I, I want this to be kind of as clean as it can be. So what I'm going to use is the restore key. As you can see down here, the restore key is the only key that comes directly out of that keyboard connector so that I can detect just that key press. And the reason is because that is used to uh, signal a non-maskable interrupt to the CPU. Uh, we won't get into what that means really, but let's just suffice it to say the, the restore key is going to be the easy one. And so I'm going to use the easy one and we'll feed that into our circuit. The other thing that we need to hook up to our circuit is a line to detect when the machine has been powered on. Lots of ways to do that and when a computer is powered on, even modern computers are powered on, the, uh, the state of memory, the state of the CPU and all the auxiliary chips is really unknown. There's no real way to power on something fresh and to know exactly the state of everything. So what happens is there's some there's some volatility into the state of the memory and the and all the innards of the computer. And so after a, a very slight delay, let's say it's a few milliseconds, then a, a reset signal will be sent. And that reset then forces everything into somewhat of a known state, uh, certainly not the memory, but all the other components. And that's sort of how you boot the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into the reset line. And that is right here, pin 40 on the 6510 or the 6502. Um, that's what I'm going to tap into. Uh, the reason I'm doing that, rather than maybe the power-up circuitry, is that if there's a cartridge in there or someone is using a reset, um, reset switch that they've added, or maybe we'll add a reset switch in the future to this computer, um, that way it'll still pick it up and it's not dependent on the power-up circuitry. It's really depending on the reset line, which is honestly the important thing anyway. When the uh, CPU gets reset, everything kind of starts over anyhow. So it really, to me, makes more sense to just tap into that reset line. And so that's what we're going to do. So what we have here is our schematic built out on a breadboard. So we could prototype, make sure everything works as we expect it to. We have our Commodore 64 with the HDMI output that we talked about a little earlier. And then of course our monitor so we can see how things are working. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on. So what you'll see here is we have the blue LED which should indicate Jiffy DOS. And if I zoom over to our screen you'll see it's indeed Jiffy DOS. So next I'm going to hold down the restore key and power this back on. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and you'll see it's standard Commodore ROM right there and if we zip back over to our circuit we'll see that it's now a green light. So that matches the functionality of our disk drive. What we need to do now is build this on a small circuit board and then figure out where in our 64 we can mount this. My thought is to mount it next to the keyboard up high in the case. Obviously our circuit board here is getting pretty full. Um, there is some space here. I really don't want to put some adhesive or, or other things that get in the way if I decide to do some more mods with this tomorrow or the next day. So I'm going to mount this up inside the case to get it out of the way. So here we have the underside of the top part of the case where the keyboard is. I think we're going to build the circuit board and attach it mechanically to this little hole here, which basically means we'll bolt it in or zip tie it in or, or something um, with some disconnect wires so that I can disconnect and remove the keyboard if necessary. So um, that's about it. Our next step then is to build the circuit board and get it connected. So here's how I lay out my circuit boards. Um, I want to use the smallest board as possible, but not so small that it's a pain in the butt to solder up and we've done that on some of our previous videos. So what I'm going to do is probably cut this guy around L and just saw that off. I've got to leave room for a header here and that'll go to the motherboard. Um, so I'll use a, a DuPont style connector and we'll, we'll plug that in there. Uh, may have to go in parallel with the board just for space concerns. And then I've got this little hole here I can use to anchor that to the keyboard. So um, not a whole lot we have to do with this one. There's not too many connections as you saw in the schematic. So we're going to chop it, solder it up, and then go from there. 
when soldering up little projects like this, I always try to start with the closest runs first. That way I don't end up with a wire going over a connection point that I, that I need to get at. Um, so I'll do the power and the grounds first because there's usually a lot of those and I may even run a power rail, if you will, using some wire to connect up to and then do the closest runs and then the furthest runs. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I do have a fume extractor, which you can't see here in the video, but it's just off to the side a little bit. And I do that just to get the fumes away so I'm not breathing all this stuff in. Um, gently blowing on the smoke, sort of pushing it to the fume extractor helps. Um, I didn't pull it all the way down because if I did that, you wouldn't be able to see you know, too much of what's going on here. Uh, but the fume extractor is a good idea. Certainly this stuff is, is not great to be breathing in. But uh, it won't take us too much longer and we'll be able to get this guy installed. And here we go. The circuit is done. The three wires go to the LED. The one single connector there goes to the Jiffy DOS ROM. And then the final connector goes to the motherboard for power, the key press, and the reset line. Okay, so there's our little board. I went ahead and I just zip tied it to the keyboard right there. I drilled a small hole and zip tied it so that it's pretty much in, in just the right spot to, for all the wires to reach. Probably could have done a better job and found a, a better way to mount it, but I guess I'm in a zip tie kind of mood. So we got everything together and it's a pretty tight fit. I violated one of my rules and didn't make all the wires extra long, so I'm going to have to come back and extend these out a little bit. But for now, that should do it. So let's snap her all back together. So here we have our Commodore 64. Green light means standard Commodore DOS, which you can see there. Matched up with our disk drive, also with standard Commodore DOS. Switch to Jiffy DOS, pushing the button, come to the 64, we can just turn it off, turn it back on, blue LED, and we have a complete Jiffy DOS system. Pretty cool. So for those that are interested, you can see here that this 64 with the HDMI converter and the switchless um, Jiffy DOS with the multicolor LED is now drawing about an amp of current. Before we started this, it was about maybe 0.79. So we've added about 250 milliamps or so uh, to the current requirements of this machine. Certainly not horrible at all. Obviously, our power supply can handle it. Your mileage may vary if you're using a stock power supply, although I would think they could handle that much. Um, I'm certainly not, not sure. I, I really haven't played with one of those in quite some time. But if you're interested, that's what we're doing. I hope everybody enjoyed the video today, making this Commodore 64 match the disk drive now in functionality and LED color. Some fun news, we passed 64 subscribers on the channel, which is of course a milestone, the next one being 128. The Commodore Room is now on Instagram at, you guessed it, The Commodore Room. If you're interested, feel free to check that out and uh, follow us if you're into old Commodore stuff. A lot of pictures and a lot of content goes on there before it comes on YouTube. And actually, there's a lot of things that go on Instagram that don't go on YouTube at all. Um, there is a lot of things that go on around here, and we just don't have time to video everything. But we do put a lot of content on Instagram, so feel free to check that out. I hope you had fun in the Commodore room today. And I hope you'll come hang out in the Commodore room again with us real soon.